This is Daily Blast Live. We're talking about what you're talking about. Get real. No. No. This is a (laughs) sham. It's finally here. Drum roll. Welcome to DBL. Happy Friday, everybody. Happy Good Friday. Yeah. yeah. Everybody out there celebrating Easter this weekend. Yes, which I know you are, so happy Good Friday. I am, yes, you I and your am. family. That, well, thank you so much. Yeah. Hello, all of you as well. Are you going to be cooking something fabulous on Sunday? No, but I'm just going to say, we're going to Papa Do's. Oh, yeah. Bust yes. up some oh, crab nice. legs. Oh, nice. <laughs> Super jealous. Bring the left. Yeah, so happy Easter, everybody. Let's get to it. Jeremy Renner sat down with Diane, so- Diane Sawyer to talk about his horrific snowplow accident last night. And for the first time, we're seeing just how it actually unfolded thanks to a new animation. But first, a quick warning. Some people may find this disturbing. So Jeremy described driving the snowplow with his foot outside the cab, and then he fell and got sucked under. Oof, man, getting caught between the plow and the icy pavement. He was trying to prevent the snow plow from hitting his nephew, if you remember. So his nephew was, like, for context. Was is- down the road. Okay. And I think he was trying to move that out of the way, like, jump out and get move oh. it out of the way. Gosh. Yeah. And he accidentally went underneath. Ugh. <clears throat> So in the interview, Jeremy got a little emotional, as I think we all would, recalling how his mom stayed by his bedside in the hospital. Take a listen. Your mom read to you. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> so she's reading Stephen King, some like horror thing. <laughs> but she just wants to like read like she's reading Dr. Seuss to me, like, you know. <laughs> how now, brown cow? <laughs> it happened to be what I was reading at the time. <laughs> but. And- I just wanted him to hear my voice. Jeremy also said he wasn't going to let the accident hold him back in any way. Take a look. I refuse to be haunted by that memory that way. This is what I talk to my family about from all their perspectives, which are horrifying, that I put upon them. But we just endured. That's real love suffering but that feeds the seeds of what love is man I, I said it yesterday I love him even more as a person I like him as an actor but love him as a person and the appreciation that he has for life after yeah. going some through something so traumatic is inspiring in, in, in a way well absolutely I also I'm sure he's going through therapy and yes, all of that absolutely. because what tends to happen, you see this a lot with victims of, um, you know, especially very violent incidences. They think about the reaction of their friends and family. And I think it's also a little bit of a coping mechanism. Mm. Like if anyone's ever been in like an accident or whatever, like you never, for, like I never forgot the look on my mother's face when she came to the hospital to see me. Like that haunted me. It actually got me over my initial shock and everything. Because you worried about her. Right. So I think that's always something important to remember um, when you are in that situation that you need to also take care of yourself as opposed to just constantly thinking about everyone else because that's going to be important to healing as well. Yeah. And this is so fresh. Yeah. It, it only happened a few months ago. And to see that he's even up giving interviews on this is absolutely outstanding. And it just shows how much of a survivor, how much he's fought for it. And the support of your friends and family during that time is critical, critical. And it'll help he- your healing and expedite that exponentially. Because without that, you know, gosh, he would have been so alone going through the, like, the worst time of his life. And that love, care, support, his mum reading Stephen King, even though it probably wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> what he wanted to hear in that moment, that's the funny stuff that you will, it gives you a humorous moment to look back and laugh yes. on in a really dark time. Yeah, that, that, I mean, that, that's what I was thinking about, Steph, is just like, t- well, two things. One, how important just hearing his mom's voice was. But mm-hmm. two, the fact that we're skipping over that he was wearing shorts during that interview. Do we not just stop and pause and look at like, how far medical technology has come. When we covered this story, I didn't say it because I didn't want to put that in the universe, but I thought we were going to be doing a follow-up story about him passing. Mm. Because that yeah, 30 no. bones, I, I mean, this was this was not like an accident. Well, it's going to take some time. Reconstructive this, surgery. This yeah, was a, a near-death experience. And the fact that he it seems alert, yep. uh, has all of his uh, full cognitive abilities. His legs look great. And like, if anybody didn't know, he looked like just normal. I mean, what they were able to do is really a sign that we are advancing medically, Mm -hmm. but also that we are able to sit back and for all we cover a lot of pop culture, a lot of 
fame and money on the show. Nobody's talking about how much he's worth. Mm -hmm. Did anybody think about how much Kobe was worth at the time of his passing? All you think about is the person they were. And it seems like this incident, as terrible as it was, exposed him for being an incredible dude. As opposed, like, the fact he's a great actor yeah. is, like, on the side. Yep. He seems like an incredible person with a great uh, support base. Yeah, and so, oh, on Easter weekend in the Catholic Church is all about resurrection, right? Wow. Coming back to life. Mm-hmm. There I it mean, is. this is a perfect, yeah. ironic example of yeah. coming back. Here for it. Prayers for you, buddy. All right, switching gears. Brooke Shields is speaking out about a date she had with the late John F. Kennedy Jr. Any Seinfeld fans here? No? <laughs> okay. Brooke told Howard Stern she met him on a ski vacation with her mom back in the 80s. After going to a local bar with his family, John John invited Brooke back to his place. Let's watch. He, like, kissed me, and it was, like, the best kiss I've ever had in my life. And I was like... It was, it was not disappointing. Oh, beyond not disappointing. Just, he's just, the, the lips are beautiful and the face is amazing and the body and the person and he's just, and he was down to earth and funny right. and irreverent. I froze though because it was so precious to me. And I was like, oh my God, you're falling in love. And if you sleep with him, he may not talk to you again and you can't handle that. Ooh, so after turning him down, Brooke said John John didn't talk to her at all the next day on the slopes. Yeah. yeah. Well, we got a whoa out there. <laughs> mm -hmm. This is a great lesson to people, especially people who feel like they need to hold on and give someone everything that they want in that moment because they feel like that's going to be the way to prolong the relationship. The relationship or the way that someone feels about you tends to be the way that someone feels about you. If they're after you for one thing, that's what they're after you for. And she was ahead of herself because she had the presence of mind to know that if she gave him this, which is herself, then that would be it. And it turned out that that's all that he wanted. And sometimes that's just the way that it is. But it's mm -hmm. John John. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't make it. What like, do you mean? Well, so she just should because he's famous and well known. I mean, like, she just should. If I was stuck at a ski chalet with Marilyn Monroe, it's going down. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's I'm just crazy. saying, oh Steph, no. Steph, what do you think about this? I'm curious. No, so the, the very, <laughs> it, it was not uh, John John by any means, but with someone who is very well known in England, we were friends bef on his way climbing up the ladder, shall, shall we say, and I was completely head over heels. For a, I knew him for a long time. We had lots of mutual friends and we'd hang out. And there was a very short spell where, um, you know, we were dating or whatever, and I did the exact same thing. And I was like, I cannot, because I will be so in love with this person. And if it doesn't go the way I think, and he had a very big reputation for being a ladies' man. And I was like, for about a month, we were dating or whatever. And then, you know, obviously, that exact same moment came. It's like, shall I come back with you, whatever? And I, I was like, no. And then, sure enough, two weeks later, that was it. Never heard from him again. That was it. And happy you made the right decision? Oh, yeah, because I would have been hook, line, and sinkered. And I would have, I would have been, I already did not deal with it well. For, I was <laughs> crying in bed for like two weeks. Like, oh, my life is over. Because I really liked him. All right. So I'm glad I didn't. I'm glad I didn't. Because, you know. His many fiancés that have gone on <laughs> afterwards have all suffered similar fates with various women. So I feel like I made a good decision. Mm. Oh, I, I, just, I think I know where you're at. Uh, yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> There's just some things I don't understand about how we approach relationships. Is Erica's giving me that eye? I don't care. <laughs> uh, you're giving the me that eye. eye. Don't say anything crazy. But honestly, <laughs> you, you know, you're, you're saying you were in love with this guy and you're thinking about your future. She was in love with JFK Jr. She's thinking about their future. Sometimes a, a relationship doesn't always have to be to the end of time like a Disney movie. Sometimes it's a crazy weekend in Mexico. Sometimes it's one night in a ski chalet. Maybe it might be six months over. It might be no, but I think years, that's fine if you're in it. that moment. But if she's saying she knew she had really strong feelings for him and, and, you know, I had really strong feelings for this person. I didn't want it just to be a weekend in something. I didn't want it just to be like a quick fling and it was over. But then following that logic, then you're having when people do have one night stands, then you're saying to yourself, I will have a one I stand with this person because I don't have strong feelings now, about them. First of all, I like how you decided what I was going to say, and I actually no, agree just the with eyes. you. Oh, good. No, I, go. no, 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 no high five. Uh, no high five. <laughs> 
I agree with you, it, but it's about the expectation, much mm -hmm. to Steph's point. I mean, there are situations, I'm sure there have been circumstances where Brooke has decided, hey, this is all it is, and right. this is in the moment. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. But when you have that type of emotion, that's something different. And mm -hmm. also, for it's a great lesson. I'm just saying, it's a really great lesson for people to learn and not have to touch the stove, so to speak, to know that it's you hot. You don't have to get burned, yeah. I, yeah, all right. I, I, I just think people need to understand that their decisions will lead to a reaction from somebody. And it might be just ghosting the next day. And that's okay, too. The only time we have a problem is when somebody's blocking the door or somebody's trying to force somebody to do something yeah. they don't want to do. But after that, however you react, if you want to have a pleasant breakfast the next morning and pretend like it didn't happen, we can do that. But if you want to be rude and sit on the other side of the dining room, we can do that, too. So I. I think this is a win-win for both parties. She made a decision. He made a decision. Yeah, but that story. <laughs> I'm just saying. Well, Coming up on story. DBA. <laughs> yeah, I guess it, right. it worked out for her. Coming up on DBA, we talk with the amazing Stephanie Mills and reminisce about her time on Broadway playing Dorothy in The Wiz. Plus, Erica has the deets on one of the Obama daughters directing a movie. Woo! It's coming up next. DBL, this show is amazing. There's a lot going on down here. <laughs> I would have been part of the Mile High Club. Yeah. <laughs> so on point. But I'm gonna have a conversation about what's happening now. Because you gotta eat lamb. On oh my gosh. So my husband, um, it, <laughs> my husband's off today. <laughs> and he sent me this text message. I'm excited to cook tomorrow for Easter. We will be having smoked lamb shoulder, homemade pitas on the uni, homemade tahini, Dang. Mediterranean oh, grilled potatoes, yeah. and a Mediterranean salad. Jesus arose in the Mediterranean, and so will our meal. <laughs> That's an awesome text message. <laughs> You can tell when someone has a day off, and they really want, they really put the effort into. <laughs> Erica, what is an uni? The uni. So for Christmas this year, I gave my husband an uni, which is a, a pizza oven. It's an outdoor propane tank. It's all the rage. It's amazing. It cooks your pizza in 60 seconds, and he. Are you that much of a hurry? It's well, super hot. Like, you make them thin. It's like yeah, it's like yeah. Yeah. It's, it's fire. Yeah, like oh. it's on the fire. Yeah. And then you pull it, pull it out, and just let it cool. You keep no, you just keep moving it around. Then you take it out. And it's done, right? It's amazing. He makes his own dough and oh um, really? Yeah. It's really good. So we have our our backyard has taken two and a half years to get done, and so now we're trying to maximize all of our backyard experiences, Sounds and that's fabulous. a part of it. Yeah. Wow. You sound like you have like 20 years. First of all, that <laughs> our backyard is taking two and a half years. Making your own dough is just like a flex and just shuts shut down the conversation. Like, I make my own dough. What are you he making? I'm like, hot dogs? Dough. Yeah, he makes his own dough. And apparently now um, he, it's like been the talk of Denver because people actually text me and ask if they can have it's, Anthony's pizza. Anthony's dough is the talk of Denver. Do you donation? So how far did a fan go to see Meg the Stallion? Malia Obama is riding her way into Hollywood. And who will play diva Dionne Warwick in this week's What Erica's Watching? First, Megan Thee Stallion performed at the NCAA Final Four concert. Access to the hotties sold out March Madness show landed a fan in some hot water. And a not so sharp barber is now facing jail time for allegedly posing as a police officer to gain access to the show. <laughs> So instead of seeing the Houston rapper slay, the man is now facing time behind bars and a rap sheet. Next, we first met Malia Obama as a young black girl in the White House. 
Now she's a boss making moves behind the big screen. The Harvard grad is writing for the new hit series Swarm and is being mentored by the show's creator, Donald Glover, who gave her advice about making her first film. The Atlanta producer and rapper warned her that because of her fame, the world will be watching her first short. Despite the added pressure, Donald is a fan of all the work she's done leading up to her film debut. And you know, I'm here for more black girl movie magic, okay? Producer, director, actor, and R&B star Tiana Taylor has been tapped to play music legend Dionne Warwick in an upcoming biopic. Not only is Tiana behind the project, so is Dion. Tiana says that she talks to the legendary diva and queen of Twitter almost every day because that's what friends are for. I mean, look at the resemblance. This is gonna be good. Share with me anything that catches your eye by using the hashtag DBL Erica Watch. We'll be right back. Former President Donald Trump pleaded not guilty to 34 felony charges in a New York court on Tuesday. He's accused of falsifying business records to cover up a variety of payments. The charges won't stop him from seeking or serving a second term in the White House. Here at Verify, we got several questions from viewers asking, if he becomes president again, can Trump pardon himself from these charges in New York? Let's verify. Our sources are the New York indictment, New York penal law, the U.S. Constitution, and the U.S. Supreme Court. The Constitution gives the president sweeping powers to issue pardons, allowing them to reduce or cancel punishments for crimes. The Supreme Court has ruled that they can issue these pardons at any time after the crime has been committed, meaning they don't have to wait for a conviction. There are only two established limits to this power. One, the president can't unimpeach somebody, including themselves. Two, the power applies only to, quote, offenses against the United States, meaning federal crimes. Pardons for state crimes go through a different process, which varies by state, but often involves the governor or some sort of pardon board. Trump's indictment is for state crimes, not federal. He's charged with violating New York penal law, falsifying business records in the first degree. So we can verify, no, Trump could not pardon himself in the New York case if he gets reelected as president. Presidential pardons apply only to federal crimes. Trump is the subject of several ongoing federal criminal investigations, and whether he could pardon himself in those cases is a topic of extensive debate amongst constitutional scholars, one that would potentially have to be settled by the Supreme Court. With your Verify, I'm Casey Decker. Welcome back. Long before a black woman was cast as the Little Mermaid, Stephanie Mills broke into the biz starting as Dorothy in The Wiz on Broadway. Now she's in a new movie called Pride, a seven deadly sin story. Earlier we chatted with her about it. Take a look. You're acting like I did this. Well, didn't you? Rob my sick grandmother? Isn't that what you did back in Houston? Rob people that you knew? Okay, well, that's not who I am now. And didn't they steal my mama's ring? Oh, great cover-up. But leopards don't change their spots. Ooh, please welcome to the show Grammy Award-winning artist Stephanie Mills. Yes. Yes. Doing Queen, now. we are so great. Thank you so much. <laughs> Where am I looking? Uh, thank you. <laughs> we're just for being in circles with over us here today. Um, we're gonna get to your movie, but first we have to talk about the Wiz. First of all, "Home" is my go-to karaoke song, honey. Uh, but you oh. played it's it's everything, you know. And you sing sung it obviously so iconically. You played Dorothy in the Tony Award-winning Broadway musical. How did Diana Ross end up playing her in the movie instead of you? Well, I think Diana Ross was a much bigger star. She was a much bigger star than I was at the time. And she wanted to be Dorothy. It's just as simple as that. Well, that's simple, and you both are iconic, so I mean, come on. <laughs> um, but The Wiz is making a limited time return to Broadway in the spring of 2024. So are you excited to see the new ad adaptation for this generation? I am very, very, very excited. And I will be there sometime to, to see the show. I'm so excited because The Wiz is a wonderful show. We won seven Tony Awards. So I'm, I'm excited. 
Yes. Obviously. I just, like, I want to clap for that. That's so amazing. I know. That's like, she just, it just comes out casually. I want to, so talented. Please, Jeff, I'm sorry. All right, well, I just want to jump in real <clears throat> quick to go back to Diana Ross. You've made headlines recently for saying that no one can compare to Diana, including Beyonce. So the Bayhive, they got upset about this. Do you still stand by that claim? Oh, I still stand by that point. Diana is my generation. I didn't say or take anything away from, from uh, Beyonce. Beyonce is this generation's Diana Ross. But Diana Ross is royalty to me. She's the epitome of class, and she was my generation. you got to remember, I'm 66 years old. I just had a birthday. So Diana Ross is my queen. That's a great answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it, does that suffice for you? Jeff? It does because okay. I, would, I, would, I would bow down and just say, no, Beyonce's better. <laughs> <laughs> Well, let's talk about your new movie, Pride, A Seven Deadly Sins Story. Besides being a famous bakery owner and reality TV star, what is this movie really about? It's about the matriarch of the family. It's about, I play the part of Birdie. Uh, nephew Tommy plays my son, Gabe. Uh, Kia King plays my granddaughter and a special guest appearance by Erica Campbell. But she's the matriarch of the family, and she did her business. She, she, she just concentrated on her business and didn't concentrate on loving her family the way they thought she should. So she had too much pride when her daughter passed away of cancer and she's trying to make it up with her granddaughter. And, and we want to really say that pride is deadly in a family. It can destroy family and relationships. That's why I love this movie. I, it's such a cool concept. The movie is part of a series exploring each of the seven deadly sins. So I have to ask you, Mrs. Mills, Queen, <laughs> which of the seven deadly sins do you think that you're most guilty of? Oh, my God. <laughs> now, name the seven. It's lust. It's gluttony. pride. It, gluttony. Uh, I'd probably say gluttony. <laughs> <laughs> No, you know why? Because I like sweets. But I don't overeat, but I love sweets. That's So me. if I had to pick one, it would probably be gluttony. I think you guys are in the same boat. I, I believe that you you deserve it. I just I'm uh, full disclosure. I was listening to I saw an interview with you two and a half weeks ago when you were on Vlad TV. Well, that's when I watched it, and it just struck me how humble you were that she was going to Broadway. Our audience needs to know this, and she didn't think it was that big of a deal. She was like, "Oh, just a place where I can sing to more people." You are just such a absolutely humble person. Like, where does that come from, and do you think that's giving you the longevity that you've had in your career? I think it. I know it definitely comes comes from my mom and how she raised me. I think, but I really do think of it as a place where I'm just singing and hopefully I'm making people happy. It's just like, I'm really happy that you guys wanted to talk to me today. Wow, well, Stephanie, Oof. thank you so much for talking to Absolutely. us today. Yeah. yeah, we're the ones thanking you. DBL Nation, be sure to watch Pride, A Seven Deadly Sin Story out April 8th on Lifetime. What a pleasure, thank you so much. It's an honor, thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. We'll be right back. All right, so as you can see, Al and I, we're just naturals at golf, buddy. But are you ready for a little bit more trivia? Yeah, some of you guys might know in 1997, Tiger was the youngest to win it all. At the age of 21. But do you know who the oldest was? Is it A, Gary Player, B, Jack Nicholas, or C, Phil Mickelson? The answer is B, Jack Nicholas, at 46 years young, won the tournament in 1986. Verify viewer Casey asked us, can food go down the wrong pipe? So let's verify. Our sources are the American Academy of Otolaryngology Head and Neck Surgery, Andrew Tkachik, an ear, nose, and throat doctor, and dysphagia specialist, Rena Abrams. When you swallow food or drinks, they should travel down your esophagus and into your stomach. But according to the American Academy of Otolaryngology Head and Neck Surgery, sometimes food can accidentally pass through your vocal cords and get stuck in the trachea, which we sometimes call the windpipe. So we basically have two pipes in our throat, if you want to think about it like that. We have our airway, which is our trachea, and then we have our esophagus or our food tube. 
when we're breathing and speaking, our airway is wide open. And so that tube is wide open and the esophagus, the food tube is closed. But if you're talking or laughing while you're eating, both tubes are open, which can allow food to slip into the wrong one and you cough to knock it loose. That is called aspiration, according to Dr. Andrew Tkachik. That's actually a good thing. That's your body recognizing the, the situation where something's going somewhere where it shouldn't. So we can verify, yes, food can go down the wrong pipe. If it happens once in a while, there's nothing to worry about. But if it happens often, our sources say you should call your doctor. You could have a medical condition called dysphagia, which can impact your ability to swallow normally and lead to pneumonia. With your Verify, I'm Ariane Till. Are you skeptical of headlines and what you see on social media? We are too. The Verify newsletter answers your questions, clarifies what's true and false, and even includes a daily fun fact. Go to verifythis.com slash email to check it out. So now having the lowest score is key to winning the Masters. So do yourself a favor and don't play like us. But do you know who had the lowest 72 hole score ever? Is it A, Tiger Woods, B, Jordan Spieth, or C, Dustin Johnson? So I personally thought it was Tiger, but Dustin Johnson broke the record in 2020 with a score of 20 under par. Incredible. All right, everybody, I hope you had fun with our Masters trivia today. I know I did. Now it's time for me and Al to hit the 19th hole and grab some lunch. Welcome back. Did you know there are things you can do to get your car, get more? <laughs> you know there's things that you could do to get more out of your gas money? That's right. That's today's auto alert sponsored by Ox Car Care. Listen up, everybody. First up, don't use high octane fuel. Most engines are designed to work with regular or mid-grade gas. Premium gas is for premium cars. Next, check your tire pressure. If it's low, you might be using more gas than you need to. And finally, declutter your trunk and back seat. Removing extra weight will put less stress on the engine and use less gas. Ox Car Care is dedicated to providing you with an amazing auto protection plan experience that works with your budget. If you're looking for better car care, give them a call today at 800-687-1821. Start that one off. Perfect, right? Hey, that, so, <laughs> so that, you know, as I looked at that, I would see what I can take from those. And I still need to learn the pressure gauge with the tire. I don't really understand that. So maybe there's a YouTube video in my future. There's normally a number. Look on the, look on the, on the wheel, right. and the number of the air pressure should be on the wheel. That's right. It yeah. seems like there's a bunch of numbers, like the wheel on. Well, some of the manufacturing number, but you'll see it's like normally 21, 28, something like that. You've got this. You can oh, do it. See? There you, you go. Put some on the universe, and there's somebody right next to you. <laughs> and what are you keeping in your car that affects your gas? Like hot water heaters just no. in your trunk? I, I actually was carrying around some bags of sand that I. <laughs> <laughs> I swear on, on my that mother. Note. On that note, happy Easter, everybody. Happy Easter. <laughs>